Hannah here from Bears Den Essentials coming to you today with a very exciting launch of a Knitting 101 series on how to knit your first tank top. Today we're going to be talking about the first steps of my knitting series which is all about how to get started on the Bitterroot Sagebrush tank top pattern. So if you don't have a copy of it yet, head to our website bearsdenessentials.com to order the Bitterroot Sagebrush tank top or head to our Ravelry page on Hannah Bears Den to grab yours there. Either way, your purchase supports our small business and allows me to keep bringing designs and finished knits to all of you. You might have heard about this tank top through Cami Noise with Ranching Tradition Fiber, who hosts the Copper Cave Fiber Festival every year in the Tobacco Root Valley, which is just up the road from us in Southwest Montana. So if you're not familiar, Cami has this really wonderful ranch where she also creates this yarn called Ranching Tradition Fiber. So the pattern I'm gonna show you uses a different number of skeins depending on the size, which I'll get into in a second, and this is the DK weight yarn. What I think is really cool about this yarn is much like our designs, all of her colors are inspired by different aspects of the Montana landscape. So you're looking at juniper right now. What's also very exciting is I have an early skein of the Copper K Fiber Fest colorway for this year, which is 2023. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be taking you through every step of the way for this tank top using this as the contrast color for the base and the lace work, and then juniper for the main color of the body, sleeves, and neck. What I have here is all of the materials that you're gonna need. To tell you a little bit about this pattern, the Bitterroot Sagebrush Tang Top is inspired by the state flower of Montana and the West most important plant. You have the Bitterroot, which is our state flower, and then you have sagebrush. And the thing that I think is really fun about this pattern is it not only emulates the colors of our landscape that I really love, but it also emulates the textures, as you can see with the lacework portion. It's a form-fitting and textured lace design. And just to tell you a little bit about the inspiration, sagebrush, the reason it's called the West most important plant is because it's a nurse plant, which actually means it helps to create the necessary conditions for other important native plants like bitterroot to grow. And bitterroot is a culturally important wildflower. And it's got these striking pink petals that have been used for millennia as a dietary supplement and medicinal aid. In this example, you can see that the tank progresses from sagebrush green to bitterroot pink as you work from the bottom up. So I was really on the nose with the colors I used, which I stand by. It was really fun to make these in the two colors that reflect the two plants that I really love the most here in, here in the West. And it's very emblematic of the shrublands that we get to call home. So to talk a bit about how the tank is worked, it's worked in the round from the bottom up, and then it's split at the underarms into front and back panels that are worked flat. And the lace work entails increases and decreases, which I will walk you through each of the steps for. And then the three needle bind off technique is what's used to seam the shoulders. And then the sleeve and the neck ribbing is also worked in the round by picking up stitches. So if that sounds kind of intimidating to you and you've only watched my how to knit a headband series, don't worry. It's again, it's all, all stuff that can be broken down into single steps and I'm gonna take you through each of them. And on top of that, I'm actually gonna also include a specialty cast on and cast off, the Chinese waitress cast on and cast off, which I think is really key to creating the perfect fit for the tank top, both at the bottom, the shoulders, and also the neck as well. So you'll get a few additional elements as I walk you through the pattern. In terms of number of skeins, that's going to depend on the size or the version that you're going to be making. So if you're going to be making it all in one color, you should follow the single color version directions in the pattern. And if you're making the two color version, it'll be one skein or two skeins of the contrast color for the base, or three skeins, four skeins, or five skeins for the main part of the body 
Take a look at your pattern, and if you have any questions about how many skeins, you can always email me. And you can also reach out to Cami when you're purchasing the yarn to let her know that you're knitting up this tank top because she's knitted it before and she's versed in the pattern too. So she's happy to help make sure you get the yarn you need. In terms of notions that you need, I always like to have a stitch counter because as much as I like to assume I can remember in my head, I just simply can't and I'll forget what I'm working on or what row I'm working on part of the way through that row. So I recommend the clover needle counter. It's, it's a little distracting if you're sitting next to somebody watching TV, but I always make it quieter by going like that. You'll also want some scrap yarn. I don't have an example in front of me of that, but you'll want about two pieces of approximately 30 inches of long scrap yarn that's about DK weight, or if you have stitch holder tubes that make your life easier that are reusable, you'll want at least two of those because you're gonna be slipping the sleeves onto that using your darning needle, which is the other item that you definitely wanna make sure that you have. So either have some scrap yarn or some stitch holders for, for the sleeves. In the pattern, I also recommend getting needle point protectors. Those aren't a requirement, but if you're always carrying your knitting around like me to anywhere from like dinner or on an airplane or the movie theater or something like that, chances are your whip is gonna get thrown around a little bit and the softer the yarn, the easier it is to slip right off your needle. So there's nothing worse than having to frog because you accidentally dropped some stitches. And for my newer knitters out there, Frogging is when you have to rip it, rip it, rip it, rip it all out, or at least part of the way. And it can be a little heartbreaking. So I think knitters use that sense of humor and call it frogging as a way to not cry when we have to rip it. Make sure you have those point protectors if possible, either that or you're very careful with your yarn. And I don't recommend doing the thing that we're all somewhat guilty of at one point, which is shoving it right into your yarn like that because then you can actually damage the strands of your yarn that way. Ask me how I learned that. <laughs> the hard way, of course. And then the other notions that I recommend you have is a couple stitch markers. So you're gonna want at least one unique stitch marker to mark the end of the round and anywhere from six to 11 additional stitch markers for the lace work. This is where preference is gonna come in. So I got these from Clover and these I believe are the small clover stitch markers. The other thing that I really like is the clover yarn cutter pendant. Someone told me about this years ago when I was at the airport and my scissors got confiscated which was a complete bummer and so if you look really closely at it you'll see that it's got an edge that you can use to just cut the yarn through but it's not going to get confiscated by TSA and it's not going to poke you in the thigh when you're carrying your knitting around. So lots of benefit to this little tool and I just threw it onto some scrap yarn so that I don't lose track of it. In terms of needles, again it depends on the size. So you're going to have the size of needles that you need for the ribbing, which is US size 5 or 3.75 millimeter circular knitting needles in the following lengths. So 16 inches and 24 inches for smaller sizes or 16 inches and 29 inches for the larger sizes. Then when you get to work the body of the knit, you're gonna switch to a US size six or 4.0 millimeter needles and you're gonna need them in the following lengths. So 24 inches for smaller sizes and then 29 inches for larger sizes. And then lastly, you're gonna wanna set of US size six double pointed knitting needles that are about seven inches. I've gotten these needles from a mix of places. I recommend Clover for knitting needles. I also really like Knitter's Pride and Chia Goo. Any of those needles, you're gonna wind up with a good, a good solid set of needles that are gonna last you for a long time and work through a lot of wear and tear. So once you've put together all of your needles and your notions, I want you to pay particular attention to creating a swatch, which nobody really enjoys doing because you just want to get straight into the knitting, but I really recommend taking your time to make sure you hit the gauge. And in my next video, I'm going to actually walk you through how to hit the gauge for this particular pattern. 
And just for your reference, if you're a superhero and you just want to get started, which again, I don't recommend doing, the gauge is approximately 20 stitches by 30 rows equals four inches square in the stocking knit stitch. After blocking, using four millimeter or US size six knitting needles. And then for the lace work or the pattern stitch portion, the gauge is approximately 21 stitches by 31 rows equals four inches square in the pattern stitch. After blocking, using four millimeter or US size six needles. So you wanna make sure you're hitting that gauge as closely as you can. Otherwise the sizing is gonna be off. In terms of sizing, to help ensure that you get the correct size, I want to quickly walk through the size guide and the size information so that you're not only selecting the correct size for yourself, you also understand how it's going to fit. The tank is designed to be close fitting with anywhere from three inches negative to zero inches positive ease at the bust. So what do I mean when I say ease? So I have a bust of 33 inches and the tank this is an extra small, has a circumference of 30 inches at the bust. So what that means is that the circumference of the knit is three inches smaller than my circumference. So that's gonna be the amount of ease or give that you have in the sweater. On more loose fitting items, you're gonna have what's called positive ease. So if I wanted a more chunky sweater or chunky tank top, then I would knit something with anywhere from three to five inches of positive ease. So it would have a measure of anywhere from 36 to 38 inches in terms of the circumference of that knit. But I wanted this to be form fitting. So when you select your size, you wanna make sure that at the widest part of your chest, you're picking a size that's gonna give you anywhere from three inches negative to zero inches of positive ease. In order to determine your size, measure yourself with a measuring tape around your bust at the widest part and then refer to the sections your bust circumference and bust circumference of finished tee to help you finalize which size you're going to be knitting. One thing I do want to note, the sizes and measurements are all approximate. Since this tank is knitted from the bottom up, something that you can do if you're a more experienced knitter is customize it to fit your body and arm lengths as you go. Just remember that any modifications are gonna impact the amount of yardage needed, so make sure you're planning accordingly. And something to help you in terms of reading a pattern so it doesn't seem like gibberish to you, is that the sizes of the tank top are all gonna correspond sequentially to the numbers provided within the pattern. So that's where I was saying earlier is I always like to print this out and circle which size I'm going to be knitting throughout because if I'm knitting the extra small, I know that every number that's located right outside the parentheses is going to be the directions I'm supposed to be following. So in this case, I'm going to be doing this extra small and it's going to have the approximate finish size of about 30 inches, as I was saying, and that corresponds with the size of the T. So we'll get into what that looks like in the directions of the pattern itself. But for now, I would just go through and make sure you circle all of the numbers that are in the position for the size tank that you're gonna be making. Another thing about this pattern, and you can already see that I've started to scribble notes in here, but something that can be kind of daunting as a newer knitter is understanding the abbreviations on the stitch glossary. So I'm gonna take you through each of these sections. So what the heck is bind off, the difference between bind off and cast off? Am I asking you to do the regular bind off or am I asking you to do the specialty bind off or cast off, which is the Chinese waitress cast off method? And I will distinguish which one I'm referring to for each of those as we go through the pattern. So if you pull up your abbreviations and stitch glossary document, you'll see the words approximately or approx, and that's just a shorthand for it's an estimate. And then BO, which is not the stinky stuff that you need deodorant for, it's bind off, which in this case is using the regular bind off method. And I will show you that one and where you're supposed to use that bind off method. 
And then CC1 is contrast color one. So remember, that's that first color that you're gonna be casting on with to do the base and the lace work. Cast on is just CO, and the beginning of this tank uses the Chinese waitress cast on method. You can use any preferred cast on method, but I want you to take a look at the one I show you because it gives a nice and stretchy base compared to some of the other tighter cast on methods. And then cast off is using the Chinese waitress cast off method and you get a similar slightly stretchy bind off edge. DPNs is just double pointed needles. So that's these guys that like to poke you in your thigh when you're carrying them in a bag. And knit or K is the classic knit stitch. And K2 tog, which can seem kind of confusing, is knit two stitches together, which is a right slanting decrease. And that comes into play when you're trying to create this little sagebrush leaf design here. MC is main color, so that's the main color that you'll be doing most of your knitting in. In this case, I'm using Juniper. Pearl is the slightly different stitch than the knit stitch. It's the contrasting stitch. So when I showed you how to knit the headband, you knit every row and you created a garter stitch. In this case, when you're knitting, in the round, which I will show you how to get started with shortly, if you knit every single round, you actually create the stocking knit stitch that you see here. But in order to create the stocking knit stitch when you're knitting flat, you need to knit one row and purl one row, which I know is confusing when you think about it, but when you do it, it's a lot less abstract, trust me. If you're someone who learns by doing like I am, it'll all become a lot clearer shortly. So rem is just remain, or round or rounds is just rounds. PM is place stitch marker. M is stitch markers. SSK is slip slip knit. So that's a left slanting decrease. So that's how you get some decreases that go like that and others that go like that. SM is slide the stitch marker over. And I'll show you what that looks like. You're just basically sliding it from your left needle to your right needle, simple as that. Stocking knit stitch, as I mentioned, is created by knitting every stitch of every round when you're working in the round and knitting every stitch on the right side and purling every stitch on the wrong side when you're working flat. ST is just stitch or stitches and WS and RS is wrong side of the work and right side of the work. It's pretty self-explanatory, but this is the right side or RS and this is the wrong side of the work. So because it's pretty obvious for this pattern, it won't be too confusing when I refer to WS and RS, but it's always good to remember. Then you have yarn over increases. And when you're working in the lace work, that becomes particularly important because for every stitch you decrease, you're gonna need to make sure you're doing a complementary increase. And that's really important for every single row because otherwise you're gonna create a very uneven circumference for the lace work portion. So I'll walk you through a yarn over increase and then one by one ribbing is knit one stitch, purl one stitch, knit one stitch, purl one stitch. Some ribbing is two by two. We love to do that for our hats. I think it looks really great on a ribbed beanie. But for this one, I think a one by one ribbing is particularly nice for a trim on the edge of here, as well as the collar or neckline and the shoulders. So we'll get into that shortly. And that's actually the first area that we will be working once we do the gauge swatch, which I know everybody's super excited for, but you'll be glad you did. So that's it for getting started. Now you should have everything you need to create that gauge swatch and test to make sure that your tension matches the tension that I outlined so that your tank is gonna fit correctly. And here's a little note that I mentioned in the other beginner's knitting pattern. New knitters tend to go one extreme or the other, which is either knitting too tight or knitting too loose. And so it's completely okay if you're one or the other. It's just good to know that you might need to do some math in order to adjust and hit the right size for this tank top. The one thing that I will say is it's a pattern stitch repeat on the lace work of 22 stitches. 
So if you are much tighter or much looser, you might wanna consider going down a full size or up a full size in order to accommodate your changes because if you try to just do like three or four stitches more or less, you're gonna throw off all of the lace work and have kind of half a sagebrush plant. So have something like that and then start on a new pattern stitch repeat. So my recommendation, let's get started with the gauge swatch and then you can see and take your temperature whether you need to go up or down a size or if you're right on the money, so to speak. So thank you for joining. I will be back shortly with a video on gauge swatching, which is everybody's favorite. All right, knitters, thank you.